So this is my Genmitsu 3018 CNC router. I didn't pay a lot for it, and it's, but it's been fairly functional uh, for small projects. It uses these eighth inch uh, milling bits. It comes with this nice little handy controller for moving things up and down and around. You can also put in a, a memory card for transferring images. It's been a nice machine, and I would certainly recommend these to anybody who's, who wants to get into CNC routing and, and is on a, on a budget. I've happily used it for, for more than a year now. I, previously, I used uh, a Shapoko uh, XL type router, but I just didn't have room for it at the time, so I bought one of these, and it's been fine. So what's the real problem? Well, the real problem is my last project was this. And as you can see, it's not quite gonna, gonna cut the mustard. So while I would certainly recommend it for somebody trying to get into CNC, it's not the router that I have now. And uh, we'll walk around the corner in my shop and I'll show you what that one is. So by contrast, this is a Onefinity X35 woodworker. And you can see, if I drop my old router on there, you can see it's pretty substantially bigger. So I wanted to take some time to kind of describe what I like and don't like about this machine. Uh, I've had it for about four months now, so I've, had, I've given it a good run. You can see there's sawdust everywhere. Uh, I actually just finished that sign I showed you um, moments ago. But uh, I'll walk you through, you know, what I like, what I don't like, some of the things I've added that aren't stock uh, because you can't have any machine without modifying it. Uh, it does come with a display much like an upscale version of the Genmitsu machine. Uh, and the other thing it comes with is this cool joystick. So with that, let's get going and uh, we'll do a full review. How's it going everybody? Steve here. Uh, welcome back to the shop. And as I mentioned in the lead in, I want to talk about the Onefinity X35 CNC router that I have. Uh, I've had it for a while. Uh, it was a big upgrade from, from uh, my small Chinese spindle, uh, which I also liked, but it's just a little small for, for what I need to do. Uh, I showed you the sign at the start. Uh, I couldn't possibly ever make that with, with uh, a small CNC router. So this is why I did the upgrade and I had space in my shop for it. I did look at a few other options as well, uh, CNC options. I looked at the Shape Poco, I looked at a couple of others and discounted some of them for obvious reasons. They were either too small, too big, too expensive, uh, some of them used belts, some of them used really cheap screw drives rather than ball screws. The Onefinity just was the one, it just looks like a, a seriously industrial machine. So uh, with that, let's get going. I'll do you a quick walkthrough uh, of the machine and uh, then we'll just quickly do some pros and cons, why you would love one of these, why you may not want one. And uh, along the way, I'll show you some additional features that uh, are options or things that I added on. So let's get going. Okay, so let's just take a little walk around here. Uh, obviously, the, the whole point of the business is the spindle. In this case, it's a Makita router. You can see a few options here as well. I've got the suck it dust boot, uh, some vacuum hose uh, running over to the back, and some of these clamps here are also uh, not provided, but they, I use them to hold down. You'll notice the rails, there's two Y rails, one on, one on each side, and the X rail across the center. I got this thing they call the stiffy, which uh, makes the, the horizontal much more rigid, since that's where all the weight is. And uh, you can see these, these tubes are quite beefy. They're probably inch, inch and a half, uh, maybe inch and three quarter. Uh, these gigantic linear bearings, which, uh, which are pretty impressive. You can see the ball screws here, ball screws throughout, which is, which is great. Uh, really adds to precision. Uh, up top, uh, standard stepper motors, stepper motors in the back. Uh, now when you assemble this, uh, in my case, I got the quick change wasteboard, uh, which is this bracket across the bottom. And you can see it actually provides its own mount on the bottom. So 
setting installing this this way the the tool this way is easy because you've got this sort of pre-squared frame if you're just mounting this on a workbench without the quick change wasteboard uh, you would normally put a screw in here pull the carriage to the front that defines the width perfectly then put a screw in on this side uh, to get to get this side rigid and then push the the movement to the back and do the same thing in the back and that's how you install it uh, as far as assembling it there's four screws on each on each end and then you put the uh, x-axis on and there's four screws on each side here so really in 10 minutes you can have the tool up and running you can certainly control things from the display here and i'm sorry it's a little bright but uh, you can control everything from here you can also su subsequently control everything from here. You can see I can move things around, up and down. Uh, the four axes buttons here control the speed. And you can also hold the, th the thumb buttons at the back and force only X or only Y movement. So uh, quite, quite interesting. Uh, if you are looking at one of these, uh, either a Onefinity or uh, other CNC, if you don't have this controller, you are making a sad mistake. This thing, I thought it was not gonna be uh, very useful, but I live on the control now. Other things you'll see here, the controller is down on the bottom. In my case, there's quite a bit of wire uh, and you can see you can mount it down on the side. A lot of people mount them on the front or even on top of the bench. Uh, quite a bunch of wires at the back, but uh, you don't really have to pay too much attention to them once they're hooked up. Last thing is you'll notice on the side here I have uh, some metal brackets and some drag chain uh, for both the Y and if I can get around to the back here uh, also the X axis and uh, I put those in after there's the community is, is uh, pretty good so uh, somebody had designed a bunch of extra 3D printed parts both for here for the mounting on the on the cable handling on the router side uh, and some of the endpoints here and i did that because uh, the cable handling in general isn't all that great so cables just kind of float around if you don't do something like that so i put those in and absolutely no regrets the bed here is uh, about workable areas about 35 inches square so lots of room and uh, there's really not much else to tell you. The, the one complaint here is the T-slots that they provide in the uh, quick change waste board are not quite standard width. I don't know what width they are, but clearly they're designed to, to use the Onefinity uh, workbench or clamps. Uh, mine are just something I got off of Amazon and I had to kind of grind down the tab at the bottom so that they would slide into the slot. But other than that, no, no drama. Uh, it's a nice little tool. So, so there you go. Okay, so let's take a look at a few things that I, I really like here and things that I think could use some work. Uh, on the pro side, uh, easy installation and setup. It's really trivial to get this thing up and running. Uh, number two in this list, it's a uh, very solid construction. I showed you a bit of, of uh, how it's put together. Big beefy rails, uh, ball screws, heavy duty stepper motors. It, it just has the whole package. The controls are great, uh, kind of third on this list. Uh, you can control this from either the display, uh, a joystick, or even from a browser on your computer. And, and that's how I, I typically use either the joystick or my browser. I don't use the display other than for just visualizing things. Uh, and finally on this side, uh, it's got a huge support community. Uh, I mentioned this when I was doing my Muse to, to Glowforge comparison, uh, that the Glowforge has a massive community. The difference here is this community is, is here because they want to help as opposed to they're trapped on the platform and they have nowhere else to go. So you'll see people here that are, are if you frequent uh, YouTube channels where they pay attention to the Onefinity, you'll see those people in the forums and they're just there to help. And I find that uh, kind of refreshing. I tapped into that information when I was uh, getting going. 
Okay, so a few things on the on the con side here. Uh, nothing f s uh, very serious, but there's just a few things. Uh, first to realize is out of the box, there's no control, so there's no software. So you have to find your own CAD tool that can export to the Onefinity. Uh, it uses standard G code, so most tools will do this, but uh, you know, certainly I look at Fusion. Uh, I also use VCarve desktop. I'll probably upgrade to Aspire. The downside is Aspire, of course, is at least the price of the of the CNC router, but that's not Onefinity's fault. Number two in this list, uh, it uses a router rather than a, a spindle. It seems like a bit of an afterthought, and I know why they did it. They did it to keep the cost down for the end user, but I think it would be nice if they had, a, you know, kind of a pro version of the tool where they do provide that spindle. They do, however, have, uh, in addition to the 65 millimeter uh, mounting bracket that a router would use that comes with your, your CNC, they also offer an 80 millimeter mount for a larger spindle. So they are paying attention to that market. They know it's there. Number three on this list is, I mentioned a bit on the in the walkthrough, the cable handling is a bit dubious. If you don't do something like, like I did and many people have done by adding drag chains, the cables are literally just dragging around on the table. That's hard on the cables, but uh, it's also possible to pinch those things in between the, the linear bearings and, and the ends of the rails. So uh, it can be potentially hazardous, uh, at least to, to the machine, if not to you. So, uh, you know, I think you either want to do the, the drag chain or hopefully at some point Onefinity offers uh, a, an out of the box solution. Uh, number four on the list, uh, I mentioned it a, a bit. The display mount is just terrible. Uh, it, it's a really sad ending to a, to a great story around the Onefinity. Um, I would have shown you mine, except I have made it disappear. I don't know where it is. Uh, it's in a box someplace, or maybe I've thrown it out. But basically, it's a plastic mount that mounts on the end of one of the Y axes, and it's got a few magnets on it, and it matches magnets on the back of the display, that the 10-inch display. And it's really flimsy. And I, you know, honestly, the first day I had my router up and running. Uh, I just bumped that thing and of course my monitor detached and headed to the floor. Fortunately, I had my foot in the way so it didn't do any damage when it hit the concrete. But it, it is something that, you know, they could have done better. Uh, the Suckid uh, dust collector, it's functional and it, it's not part of the standard package, it's an add-on. but. Uh, it's functional, but it's really plastic and it's kind of flimsy and really it should be attached to the up-down mechanism on the Z-axis rather than to the bottom of the Z-axis. It hangs down low uh, at material height and, uh, you know, if you have a thin piece of material that you're working on and then you suddenly put a thick piece on there, uh, it's prone to collisions. So I think they could have they could have done a little better there. Number five on the on the the list is some of the basic features that other CNC packages include uh, are kind of options here. So one being the Z-axis uh, calibration tool, uh, you can buy one from Onefinity for it's around a hundred dollars. It's basically a, a, an aluminum brick that you can put in the corner, and it will it will calibrate the X and Y as well as the Z-axis, but I honestly find it's easier to do to do it without that tool. Uh, I, for the most part, do center out engraving, so getting finding zero in the corner is kind of pointless to me anyway. So you know your mileage may vary. You may you may love it. You may hate it. I don't know. Another add-on is the quick change uh, wasteboard uh, frame. Uh, it's a really really good feature. Uh, again, if there was a pro package, I would kind of expect that to be part of the pro package, but uh, it isn't. It's an add-on. It's a really useful add-on though, So, um, but it is shocking that uh, you would otherwise just lay your CNC on a table and, and screw some wasteboard to the, to the table, and, and that's how you would normally do it. I mentioned uh, dust collection already. It's an add-on. Now, Onefinity has three different versions of this. They kind of have low, uh, you know, good, better, and best. Uh, the best one is uh, one that actually has a rear mounting uh, mechanism. 
uh, behind the router. So, uh, you know, if you're considering dust collection and who wouldn't, because honestly, every CNC router should have this in the box, um, get that one. So there you go. There's my list of cons. Nothing really serious here, but just a few little things that annoy me. All right, so that's the, the basics of the Onefinity. I tried to cover at a high level all of the significant pieces. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about is the price. Uh, the X35 is around $2,200. That was the base price of what I got. And for that, I got uh, the 10-inch display, the controller, and the unit itself. Add on an, another $400 for the Quick Change Wasteboard and another $50 for the joystick. I also bought the, the Z probe, but like I said, it's sitting over in, on the shelf. So uh, I tend not to use it. There's also an X50 version of this machine, which is a full 48 by 48 uh, inch work area. Uh, if you work on big pieces or you wanna drop a sheet of plywood on there, a full sheet without having to cut it, that might be the one you wanna consider. That one starts around $2,400. So you know so that's the pricing it's it's surprisingly good i mean it sounds like a big number but but in reality what the tool can provide it's actually a very good price so in summary yes i would definitely recommend the onefinity x35 woodworker if you're in the market where you're beyond the the amazon style uh, genmitsu type cnc routers i have no regrets buying it and i, and I would buy another one today it's uh, it answers a whole lot of problems that i was having around just working with things that were thicker bigger uh, you know anything that that you typically would have a hard time cutting uh, by a laser so it just does yet another uh, key chore in my workshop and uh, you know you might be considering that as well so go check onefinitycnc.com i don't have a promo code for this so i get no kickback whatsoever if you buy one but uh, definitely i would still recommend it feel free if uh, if you're ordering one from them to drop the channel name in there so that they know i exist and that we as a group exist because i will i would like to do more videos around some of the other tools are, that makers use. Uh, I know I've spent a lot of time talking about lasers, but there's much more beyond that. So, so you know, keep that in mind. As always, I'll put a video up above here. If you're interested, go watch that and I'll see you over there. Otherwise, go make your world and I'll see you next time. Take care.